We're now going to talk about the dot product of vectors. So the question is, given two vectors, how can I multiply them? And let's suppose there are three component vectors, a and b. So the most naive thing we could do is we could say, well, by analogy with addition of vectors, let's just multiply all the components. So we could say the product is a1, b1, comma, a2, b2, comma, a3, b3. Well, we could make any definition we want, but this definition doesn't really have any nice geometric interpretation. So it normally does not do this. Instead, there are two other ways of multiplying vectors called the dot product and the cross product. So we'll first do the dot product. So the dot product inputs two vectors and they can be in any dimension. So it inputs two n component vectors but both vectors have to have the same number of components and outputs a number. So the dot product of a and b, and it's denoted by, well, a dot. In the three-dimensional case, it's a1, b1, plus a2, b2, plus a3, b3. For two component factors, you just have a1, b1, plus a2, b2. Then for n component factors, you add up to a, n, b, n. So. Um, but let's, let's stick with a three-dimensional case just for definiteness. Okay, so what is the geometric meaning? So the geometric interpretation is as follows. So suppose I draw the two vectors such that they're both starting at the same point. So here A and B. And then there's going to be some angle, let's call it theta, between these two vectors. And the geometric interpretation of the dot product is that A dot B is the length of A times the length of B times the co cosine of the angle theta. So I'll explain later why this is true. Let's first look at a couple of examples. So for example, the case where a equals b, I have a dot a, by definition that's a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared, and we recognize this as the length of a squared, because the length of a is the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. And this is consistent with our formula up here, because here theta equals zero, so cosine of theta equals one. Another example is that if a is perpendicular to b, so that the cosine of theta equals zero, then a dot b equals zero. Now, in fact, the logic here is a bit messed up because we don't have an a priori definition of what it means for two three-dimensional vectors to be perpendicular. So I'm actually going to use this as a definition of perpendicular. So we're going to define um, a perpendicular to b means that a dot b equals zero. And we'll see a little later why this definition of perpendicular has the properties that we would like it to have, so that it's a good definition. Okay, so this symbol is perpendicular, or is perpendicular to. Okay, now before I get to that, I need to tell you about a couple of algebraic properties of dot product. So dot product is commutative and distributive over addition. So 
So what does that mean? So commutative means that a dot b equals b dot a. So this is immediate from the definition. Remember a dot b equals a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3. And if I switch the order of a and b, then I'm just going to switch the order of a1 and b1 and the order of a2 and b2 and so on in each of these terms. And so I'll get the same answer because multiplication of ordinary real numbers is commutative. Okay. And distributive means that if I take the dot product of a with the sum of vectors b and c, so a dot b plus c is equal to a dot b plus a dot c. So let's check this. So a dot b plus c is a1, a2, a3 dot, let's write the components of b and c as b1, b2, b3, and c1, c2, c3. So by the definition of addition of vectors, this is a1, a2, a3 dot b1 plus c1 comma b2 plus c2 comma b3 plus c3. And now by the definition of dot product, this is a1 times b1 plus c1 plus a2 times b2 plus c2 plus a3 times b3 plus c3. And now, since ordinary multiplication is distributive, distributive, this is a1b1 plus a1c1 plus a2b2 plus a2c2 plus a3b3 plus a3c3. And now let's sort of recombine the terms here. So I'm going to underline these terms in red. So this is a1b1 plus a2b2 plus a3b3. And then the remaining terms, let's do these in blue. So this is plus a1c1 plus a2c2 plus a3c3. And this is a dot b plus a dot c. So it works. Okay, so that was a straightforward check using the definitions. Now there's a little warning, which is that dot product is not associative. So associative would mean that a dot b dot c equals a dot b dot c. However, this equation doesn't make sense because neither side of it is well defined. Why not? Well, a is a vector and b dot c is a number or a scalar. And the dot product of a vector and a scalar is not defined. Dot product is only defined for two vectors. And the right-hand side is not defined for the same reason. So a dot b is a scalar and c is a vector, so we can't define them. They're dot product. So dot product is not associative because the associative property just doesn't make any sense. Now, we do have a different way of multiplying a vector and a scalar, which doesn't have a dot. So you could say, you know, is the scalar b dot c times the vector a, so we, we multiply each component of a by this number, is that equal to a dot b as a scalar multiplied by c. Well, you can check it and no, it doesn't. So that doesn't make sense either. Anyway, so um, dot product and addition of vectors do satisfy the usual algebraic properties when they make sense. 
Okay, now let's go back to the business about vectors being perpendicular. So I defined two vectors to be perpendicular when their dot product is zero. But I now want to prove a theorem which shows that this definition makes sense or agrees with our usual idea of what perpendicular should mean. So this is the Pythagorean theorem. And it says that if A is perpendicular to B, then the length of A plus B squared equals the length of A squared plus the length of B squared. So the picture for this is if here's the vector A, and I put the vector B with the tail of the vector B and the head of the vector A, and these make a right angle, then the diagonal of this triangle is the vector a plus b. So this agrees with our usual notion of the Pythagorean theorem, but now it's in any number of dimensions, and I'm defining perpendicular using the dot product. So the proof. So let's look at a plus b squared. So we know that the length squared of a vector is the dot product of the vector with itself. So this is a plus b dot product with a plus b. Now, since the dot product is distributive over addition, I can expand this as a sum of four dot products. So this is a dot a plus a dot b plus b dot a plus b dot b. Now we can cancel out some of these terms here. So a dot b is equal to zero. So this equals zero because I assumed that a is perpendicular to b. And b dot a is also zero, and that's because the dot product is commutative. So b dot a is the same as a dot b. And we know that a dot b is zero. So what I'm left with here is the length of a squared plus the length of b squared. And that's what I wanted to prove. So that shows that my definition of two vectors being perpendicular when their dot product is zero is a reasonable definition of what it means for two vectors to be perpendicular. Now the more general interpretation of dot products when the vectors are not perpendicular or parallel involving cosine theta is a little trickier and I'll explain that in the next lecture segment.